Hello, I'm John Eldridge, and welcome to the Ransomed Heart audio podcast. For more information on Ransomed Heart Ministries, our resources and events, please visit us online at www.ransomedheart.com. And this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless until the day of Christ. Friends, welcome back to the Ransomed Heart Podcast. I'm John Eldridge. So glad you're listening in with me, Craig McConnell. And um, this is part two in a series that we're beginning on relationship, loving, the, the quality of relating we offer. And I, honestly, I am still kind of you know, um, feeling the aftershocks of the idea that your spiritual maturity, your character, the, um, the quality of your walk with God is best measured by or most clearly expressed by the quality of the relating that you offer. I mean, that was Craig's premise last time, and I believe that's true. I just am blown away by that one, because it's so beautifully true, but two, because we don't use that. Mm-hmm. That isn't the barometer. Every, you know, people who are chasing maturity are either looking to, you know, um, wow, she's a real prayer warrior, you know, or, or, or he prays so powerfully, or, you know, they're just they're just so gifted in wisdom and or all kinds of things like, you know, they handle their money well or how much the money they give or, you know, um, how they raise their children and their children are so obedient or, you know, wow, they have a big church. Right? Yeah. We, we don't think that the quality of the relationships we offer is the truest test. And, and so what a wonderful series to be pushing into. What a wonderful, um, a wonderful thing to think through together. Mm-hmm. John, I was um, I was just thinking of um, a gentleman that uh, I spent some time with uh, this last week, and he is a pretty phenomenal guy, uh, successful, networked, um, so on and so forth. And after uh, spending some time with him, I just noticed how um, how just very shallow the conversation was. Um, good at networking, good at uh, having uh, just uh, a lot of friends, but how just empty Mm. the relationship was. Mm. And then in contrast, uh, an hour or so later, later in the day, I uh, met with another man who um, was a man, I just, uh, a nobody compared to the initial one, but a man, I just, I immediately wanted to be Mm. like him. Mm. The way he treated me, loved me, there was a strength. There was something there that I just thought, I'd love to spend more time with this guy. Although from the whole network thing and all of that, the the first guy was, you know, the guy I probably should spend time with. I don't know. Does that make sense? Oh, we will be shocked <laughs> when we get to heaven who are the real giants. Uh huh. They're not going to be the people that we held up as giants in this world for the most part. Now, some, some. But, yeah, the movers and shakers in Christendom, mm-hmm. the powerful this, the famous mm-hmm. that, and, and go, really? Compared mm-hmm. to, you know, what's the quality of relationship they offer? Craig, where I want to go, um, sloppiness. Talk about sloppiness in relating. Well, sloppiness in in relating would be um, the person who sits down and with good intention says, so how you doing, really? And if you begin to share how you're doing, really, um, they don't know how to handle that. Um, they're either shocked, judgmental, or just offer a cliché. Yeah, I, mean, I think more often it's that. It's, yeah. You know, there's the quick word of comfort, the quick word of counsel. They're uncomfortable if it goes for more than five minutes. Yes. You know, the sloppiness comes in with uh, they check out. 
Yes. They didn't even mean the question. Mm -hmm. When they ask, how are you, Mm -hmm. they didn't mean, how Mm -hmm. are you? Yeah. Right? Yeah. You know, it was a pose of concern that they didn't expect you to take them up on. Right. (laughs) Right? Right. I mean, that's the sloppiness. You know, you were describing the shallow Mm -hmm. person, Mm -hmm. you know, but also just the person that checks out. Yeah. They're just not, you know few minutes in the conversation, you can just see their eyes glaze over and they're already thinking about their next meeting, their mm-hmm. next appointment, what they got to get done this evening. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. um, I think there's a sloppiness that's reflected um, also in not asking the other person how they're doing. You know, two people meet, two women, yeah. you know, run into each other at Starbucks and, and Jane says to Susie, Wow, how are you? I haven't seen you for so long. Tell me what's up. How's it going? And wow, Susie's really grateful and da 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 da. And she goes on and expresses how she's doing, but she doesn't ask the question in return. Mm-hmm. There's not a reciprocating in mm-hmm. relationship, mm-hmm. right? It's all one sided. Mm-hmm. In fact, to be honest, many people ask, How are you doing? only in hopes that you will ask them. Right how they're doing, you Mm -hmm. know, but there isn't a, you know, that would be another expression of sloppiness, just simply not asking the other person meaningfully. Now tell me about your life. Mm -hmm. I've told you about me. Now I want to hear about you. Yeah. So there's the person who um, just doesn't pick up on any clues that you're hurting, you're struggling, you're battle. They have no ability to one see or even speak to it. Then there's the person just on and on and on. It's all about them. They just want to talk. And then there's people that actually do harm. And it goes perhaps beyond sloppiness where their response is so cliche or abrupt or brutal or, you know, you shouldn't be struggling with that or just get it together, man, or or you're kidding. Right. You. Right. And. Or, or the response could even be, you know, more brutal than that, where it just hurts. Yeah. Yeah. I'm thinking of how many small groups have you been in over the years where, you know, everybody kind of knows the format that maybe we have an hour for sharing and we have an hour to pray for one another, just for example, mm-hmm. you know, or we've got some, some mingling time and then we're going to go into a teaching time or watch a video or something. People kind of know the format. Everybody's there. Everybody knows the format. And then you get the person who begins to talk and talk and they just go on and on and they burn up the meeting by stories that carry on too long, Mm -hmm. exhortations that carry on too long, their opinion on something. And you go, you know. That's just sloppy. Yes. That's sloppy relating. You're not aware of your context and your effect on others. Well, then here's where it gets even sloppier, John. So what's the rest of the group do? Do they call them on it? Right. Do they say, hold on? I mean, the sloppiness spills over into the group, just endures it, takes it, smiles, kind of gets through it. What does it mean to Mm -hmm. speak the truth in love Mm -hmm. to one another? Mm -hmm. What's it mean to kind of admonish one another or stronger language, even rebuke one another, Mm -hmm. correct one another? I mean, someone is sloppy and they're loving, and what's our response? It's generally sloppy in return, you know? Yeah, that's good. Yeah, all I want to do is just get out of the conversation. Yeah. You know, I'm thinking of the person that, you know, I run into, and they just start, they don't ask me if I have 15 minutes. They just start a monologue, you know, and what would love look like in that scenario? How would Jesus engage that person? Um, Hey, Dale, I actually would like to hear how you're doing. I don't have time for that right Mm -hmm. now. You know, why don't we try and connect next week when I some Mm -hmm. sort of honesty? Mm -hmm. Now, again, not just, you know, you're not just blowing them away, Mm -hmm. not just I'm pissed, so I'm going to, you know, cut you off, but... There is a sloppiness to the church's handling of love. Nobody is going to argue against love. 
right? right? I mean, nobody's going to argue against that. And when you throw the love card on the table, everybody kind of gets sheepish and silent and goes, oh, yeah, right, we need to love. But we don't take it any deeper than that. It remains at this very superficial level. So what we're trying to press into, friends, as we move into this series on relating is what does it look like to love? How do we love with knowledge and depth of insight? How do we become aware of our impact on others and offer a quality of relationship that God would offer? You know, that's the goal, Mm -hmm. to love as he loves. And so we're talking about a sloppiness in relating. Craig, what gets in the way? Why do we get sloppy? Why do we stay shallow? Mm -hmm. These different things that keep us relating poorly with one another, what gets in the way of relating well? Yeah, there's probably a lot of things. Um, The first thing that comes to mind, John, is, uh, um, you know, my sloppy relating probably speaks of of my own heart and it's kind of sloppiness. Hmm. I immediately go to the passages at Luke 7 where um, Jesus uh, dines and forgives the uh, harlot of much. And uh, he concludes his little story with uh, those who are forgiven much, love much. Mm -hmm. It just feels like um, the external, the, the internal and the external behavior of compassion being moved with compassion and then acting in in truth and in love and behaviors is all dependent upon um, God just capturing my heart, me experiencing his love. I I think the primary reason we're sloppy Mm. is um, I don't know that we've really tasted and experienced and known the grace, the love, the forgiveness, the affection of God in a way that influences the way we love others. Mm-hmm. You know, so many of uh, so many of the behavioral commands in Scripture are be merciful, and they point to God's character as I have been. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, we're not called to just drum up a commitment to love and yeah. act like lovers. Right. right. It comes from some heart that's been transformed by yeah. love. Yeah, that's good. And maybe that connects with, um, I think that the shallow person cannot offer a quality of relationship because they're unaware of their internal world. And when you're unaware of your internal world, you don't appreciate the mercy and you don't appreciate the forgiveness. And that doesn't change your life. You know, it stays at a very surfacey level. So I'm I'm thinking one of the one of the main things that keeps us from relating well is that we ignore our own inner life. Mm -hmm. I mean, not even, for example, just simply motives, Mm -hmm. just not even aware of motives when it comes to relating to other people. Now, yeah, you know, we can feel the irritation. We know this person bugs us, so we avoid them, that kind of thing. But wouldn't you just say that a neglect of self-awareness and that you have an inner world, you have motives? I'm thinking of the mover and shaker, the networker, the person that's, you know, got, you know, 500 relationships, but they're all half an inch deep, yeah. and, and again, admired, respected, wow, that person's so well connected. We go, really? The quality of their relationship that they offer is, is you know, it's anemic. It's just mm-hmm. nothing. And, mm-hmm. and, and it tends to be those, I'm thinking of those type of folks, very unaware of their internal world, mm-hmm. very unaware even of the motives that are compelling the networking. Mm-hmm. Why are you compelled to network? Mm-hmm. Why do you feel like you have to, you know, talk to the pastor after the service mm-hmm. every week? Why? Why do yeah. you do that? Why do you get in line? Are you aware of your motives? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, or someone who has a reflective of their internal world would ask the question of, this person right now is so boring. Why do I feel helpless in, in addressing that or loving him? Why do I want to run? Mm. It's easy to understand from his behavior, but what is it about my heart mm. that doesn't want to love him or confront him or speak to him? Yeah, I think now that we're pushing into this a little more, you know what the honest truth is? I just don't um, – I don't want to be inconvenienced. Yes. 
That's it. What gets in the way of quality relating? I just don't want to be inconvenienced. Um, you know, whether it's a pace of life I'm trying to maintain and that pace that I've created is going to be really interrupted if I ask someone how they're doing. So I just don't ask. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. that's pretty shallow, yeah. you know, but I think it's on a whole on a whole host of, of examples, I don't want to be inconvenienced. So it's going to get messy. I'm going to be more involved. I just, you know, I don't. And so I'm exposed. Yeah, it's going to require something of you. Exactly. We're asking the question, why are we so sloppy in relationship? We're asking the question, what gets in the way? And, you know, a lack of... <laughs> A lack of being gripped by the love of God, the mercy of God. Um, so Craig was saying, and and then just a completely unreflective life. Just a person who's clueless of their own internal world. Mm-hmm. You know, they're just going to blast through relationship. Um, but as we push a little deeper into that, I, I just think I don't want to be inconvenienced. I mean, just it's a hassle. Mm-hmm. What does James say? What's the source of wars and conflicts among you? You you know, you want something, you don't get it, life's not unfolding, it requires something of you, and so you you know, you murder one another. Yeah. You know, you you go after one another. Right. Or Right. Or Paul and Galatians, we either we either love or we consume one another. There's not a third option there. Mm. 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 We are relational beings, friends, relational to the core of our being. And the transformation of our character and the clearest and truest expression of our godliness, our holiness, our our walk with God is not our spiritual gifting. Mm -hmm. You know, gifts are actually given pretty freely, as the scriptures say, and I've met very broken people that were amazingly gifted in the spirit. But, I mean, they they had no quality relationships in their life. Either they had no relationships, period, or the ones that they had were awkward and sloppy. So that's not big, powerful, amazing, spirit-led is actually not the test. The scriptures just continue to bring us back to uh, the quality of your loving. Mm -hmm. Craig, um, think of the people that have had the greatest impact on you. Mm -hmm. Why? What made their life so impactful on yours? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking of a couple of people. One's uh, an ally of ours and a friend of mine, a doctor, lives in Florida. And uh, I have seen him around so many different kinds of people. And he is, um, he just pursues people. Um, I thought he was my best friend. And (laughs) he may be. But then I noticed the same love, interest, focus, giving um, that I experienced with him. Actually, I saw him in operation at a small uh, weekend retreat, and he was giving it to everyone. And and these these aren't the easiest people to love. So he's a man that I have told him. I've said, uh, um, you are the model to me of what it means to love. Wow. I, I was so long to be like him. Mm. He is mm. an in-the-flesh person. Name another. Person you know, in your life experience that yeah. has had the greatest impact on yeah. you. What does that look like? What does that feel like? Mm-hmm. Um, what it looks and feels like is I walk away um, just wanting more of God. I mean, that's the practical impact. I just want mm. to have mm. God work in me mm as he is in this person mm. and to offer mm. what he just offered me to others. I, mm. I just feel like mm. I just touched yeah. God in a way that, that gives me a hunger to be like that. Um, another guy just is mm. 
mm. unbelievably pursues me. He gets so very little from me, mm. and mm. he's not like a groupie or anything. He just loves me. Wow. And I just think of how much, how much he gives, offers, and is there. And uh, I feel like he's he's another example. Mm. I so want to be like that person. Mm. You know what I'm also struck by in this moment is, wow, friends, um, not only could you get a really great example from those who have had the biggest impact mm-hmm. on you, like think about it, you know, it's not going to be their teaching. It's going to be the quality of relationship they offered. But here's another way of coming at it, friends. Who has had the worst impact mm-hmm. on you? Who has had the worst impact on you? And I will guarantee you that from that perspective, it was the quality of yes. relationship, right, that yeah. they, quote, offered you or didn't offer you or you yeah. know, the, the malpractice of relationship that took place. And so it's just a like we can learn. We can learn from what's around us and just learn from your own experience. You know, the, kind of basic. What do you enjoy being asked? Ask that. Mm -hmm. How do you enjoy being pursued? Pursue like that. Where do you feel most blown off? What has had the worst impact on you? Mm -hmm. Don't do that. That. (laughs) Uh, Thanks for listening in on the Ransomed Heart Podcast. We are pursuing a series on relating, loving. This week's was sloppiness and kind of what gets in the way. I want to push into in the next couple weeks, loving different kinds of people. And it's very different to love a fool, Mm -hmm. as Dan Allender would say, than it is to love an evil person. And so Paul, again, saying, I just, I want your love to abound. You betcha. Love away. Love abundantly. But he goes on to say, please, in knowledge and depth of insight. Thanks for listening in.